Today in our 2005 Toyota Sienna, we'll be installing the e-trailer ETB C7 brake controller install kit, part number ETB C7. Along with the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885, we'll be adding this to a vehicle that's already equipped with a hitch and four pole flat wiring harness. To start, we'll first go ahead and assemble the seven pole adapter bracket. With the hardware provided, we'll use it to attach the bracket to the seven pole adapter. We'll go ahead and take the bracket, feed it over the wires and up to the back of the mounting surface for the seven pole adapter. Then we'll take the screws, feed them through the front side of the seven pole and secure it with the nuts on the back side. Once we have all four in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. I'm gonna go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up eight to 10 inches of our wire. This will assist in bundling our wires together and help protect it from the elements. Next, we'll go ahead and attach the draw tight no drill mounting bracket, part number 18136. Using the fasteners provided with the bracket, we can secure it to the seven pole bracket. Now, once we have our seven pole bracket mounted to the no drill mounting bracket, We'll go ahead and attach it to the hitch. Take our wiring, feed it up over the hitch. Feed our bracket into place. And then use the worm gear clamp provided to secure the no drill mounting bracket directly to the hitch. Now once we have it secured, we have two options for trimming off the excess. You can use a pair of tin snips or a rotary cutoff wheel. We're just gonna go ahead and use the tin snip to trim it off. Note, after you trim it, there can be sharp edges, so you wanna be careful around the clamp once it's been trimmed. Next, we'll take the four pole harness here on the back of our new seven pole connector and plug it in directly to the four pole harness on the vehicle. Before we connect the two together, we're gonna to install some dielectric grease on the connector to help prevent corrosion that can build up over time. We're gonna be using the Edelman dielectric grease part number 11755. Note, we'll go ahead and cut the cap off the four pole flat that's on the vehicle as it'll no longer be necessary. Next, we need to hook up the black and blue wires coming from our seven pole connector. We'll be connecting these to the gray duplex cable provided with the install kit. Now to connect the two, we'll need to expose the wires inside the sheath. So we'll go ahead and cut the sheath back. Let's cut that off and out of the way. And then we'll strip back the wires. With the butt connectors already attached, on our seven blade harness side. We'll match it up black to black and secure it with the butt connector. Then we'll take the blue and put it on the white side. Now with our connections made, we're gonna wanna wrap them up with some black electrical tape to help keep them free from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. Next, we'll go ahead and take our harness and run it over towards the driver's side along the hitch, securing it with zip ties as necessary.
Now the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal is going to be the new ground for our 7-pole connector. We're going to run it up over the hitch and ultimately to the vehicle frame. Now with our ground secured, we're ready to take the gray duplex cable and ultimately run up underneath the vehicle to the bottom of the engine compartment. We'll route through the engine compartment until we can gain access to it at the top of the engine bay. To assist in routing our wire, we're going to use the Redline Metal Loom Clamp, part number A0500. The clamp will go around the wire, and then we'll use a self-tapping screw to secure it to the bottom of the frame. Now as we route our wire, we'll use the zip ties provided with our install kit to secure it. But note, when you're routing your wire, stay away from any moving components and steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. Now with our wire routed to the top of the engine compartment, we'll need to locate it an area that we can route through the firewall. For this application, we're gonna utilize the manufacturer's grommet here on the driver's side behind the dashboard. Using a utility knife, we'll cut a small hole in the grommet and then use a fish wire, which can be a stiff piece of metal, or in this case, a piece of air tubing to route through the firewall into the engine compartment. We'll utilize this same grommet for running our brake hot lead from the seven pole, from the brake controller to the seven pole and also a power and ground for the brake controller. Here we have our great duplex cable that we ran up into the engine compartment from the seven pole connector. The black wire is gonna get routed over to the fender well where we'll mount a breaker and ultimately run a hot lead to the battery. The white wire needs to be a continuous run going all the way into the cabin of the vehicle. However, we have plenty of leftover length, so we're gonna go ahead and cut off some excess length. We'll hang on to the cutoff piece as we'll use it a little bit later. Since we have one lead that'll stay in the engine compartment and the other one gets routed into the cabin of the vehicle, we'll need to remove the gray duplex cable. So I'll go ahead and use my utility knife to cut the sheathing back. Go ahead and split it and remove our wires from it. As we're working here, we can also see our pull wire that we routed into the engine compartment to utilize our pull wire. We'll go ahead and grab it, pull it out here. We can get access to it. Take the white wire that's going to get routed into the cabin of the vehicle using some electrical tape. We can simply tape the white wire to the pull wire. While we have access to our pull wire, we can also take the leftover piece of our gray duplex cable that we just trimmed off and tape it to the pull wire and pull it into the cabin of the vehicle at the same time as the white wire. We'll go ahead and tape it to the pull wire also. You'll notice I'm staggering it so they don't all get pulled in at the same time as we're trying to work our way the grommet. Now that we've got our wires routed to the inside, we'll go ahead and remove our electrical tape and pull wire. Now that we've got our wires routed inside, we'll go ahead and start mounting the brake controller. For this application, I'm gonna use the brake controller pocket that we can mount directly here to the dashboard. To mount it, we'll use the screws provided with the install kit. We'll need to start wiring the brake controller pigtail. We're gonna start with the red wire from the pigtail it's going to route to the vehicle brake switch and connect with the lead that's hot only when the brake pedal is depressed. First, we'll locate the brake switch, which for this application is right here next to the brake pedal. 
Then we can pull back on the cover around the wires for the brake switch and use our test light to determine which lead is hot when the brake pedal is depressed. So the white wire, as you can see, is hot at all times. What we're looking for is a wire that is only hot when the brake pedal is depressed. And here we have it. We located a, we located a green wire with a white stripe. To connect the two, we use the quick splice connector provided with our install kit. We'll take the quick splice connector, slide it over the manufacturer's wire, and into position. Then we'll take the red wire, and slide it into the quick splice connector, and crimp it down. And then we'll close the clasp on the quick splice connector. Note, I recommend to wrap it up with a little electrical tape just to help keep the connection point clean. Now with the brake switch connection point made, we'll take the blue wire from our brake controller pigtail and attach to the white wire that we ran from the back of the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the white wire first, strip it back. Take the blue wire from our pigtail and use the yellow buck connector provided with the brake control install kit. Then we'll take the other end of the butt connector and attach it to our white wire. Next, we'll take the gray duplex cable and we'll strip back a couple inches so we can gain access to our wires. Cut off that gray sheathing and strip back our wires. Now our black and white wire from the gray duplex cable will match up color for color for the black and white wire from the brake controller. Again, we're just gonna match these color for color. Now with all our connections made, we're gonna use some black electrical tape to wrap up our pigtail and connection points. Next, we'll take our pigtail and start routing it into position. Once we route it into place, we can then go ahead and plug it into the back of our brake controller. And then put our brake controller into the pocket. Then I'll go ahead and secure my wiring as necessary with the zip ties up under the dash. Now we're gonna move back to the engine compartment. Here we're gonna route our wires over to the driver's side inner fender well. Here at the fender well is where we're gonna attach our breakers. For this application, we'll use a 40 amp breaker for the 12 volt hot supply to our seven pole connector and a 20 amp breaker for the power to the brake controller. Using the self-tapping screws provided with our brake controller install kit, we'll go ahead and secure our breakers now. Now with our breakers attached, we'll go ahead and start routing our wires. The black wire here is what's remaining from the gray duplex cable we mounted, we routed from the back of the vehicle. And it's gonna go to the 40 amp breaker. Go ahead and route it, mark it, and cut off the excess. We can trim it back and add a small ring terminal to supply with our install kit.
Then once we secure our ring terminal, we'll slide it onto the silver side of our breaker as the copper side is reserved for the hot lead that goes directly to the battery. To secure our ring terminal, we'll install the serrated washer and nut. We'll just go finger tight this time. Next, we'll take our gray duplex cable. We round it into the cabin of the vehicle. Mark it where it's gonna need to be stripped back so that we can run the black wire to our breaker and the white wire will ultimately get routed to the negative battery post. Here we can go ahead and cut off the excess wire and then begin stripping back the gray sheathing. Now I'll go ahead and cut off the black wire. Strip it back and add a small ring terminal. Slide it over the 20 amp breaker and it'll be the hot lead going to the brake controller. We'll secure it with the same star washer and nut. Now once we've taken the black wire out of the remaining gray duplex cable, we'll go ahead and strip back two ends. Both of these ends, we'll get small ring terminals to attach to the breakers. Go ahead and attach them to the breakers now. Once we have all the serrated washers and nuts onto the breakers, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now with our hot leads routed over towards the positive battery cable, we'll take the white wire we'll be using for our ground, route it, trim off any excess, strip it back, and add a large ring terminal. Now that we've got our ground wire set up, we'll go ahead and leave it sit there as we'll be attaching it to the negative battery post. Let's go ahead and prep our power wires. I'm gonna remove the cap from the positive battery post. Mark the length of my wires, cut them, strip them back, and add ring terminals to each. Go ahead and route them through the positive battery cap hold down. and then install the ring terminals. Next, we'll remove the nut on the positive battery post terminal, install the ring terminals, and then resecure the nut. Then we can go ahead and reinstall our positive battery terminal cap. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process at the negative battery terminal. Now with our connections made, secure our wiring as necessary, cut off any of the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. With all our connections made, we're now gonna go ahead and go over operation of the new brake controller. With this application, 
we have two blue lights that will show we have power to our brake controller. Then when we connect our trailer, we'll get a C, which will stand for trailer connection detected. Then once we're finished using our trailer, we'll simply unplug it and our brake controller will indicate that the wires have been unplugged and we'll get an NC for no connection. Now with that, this will complete the install of the e-trailer brake controller install kit, part number ETB C7, along with the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885 on our 2005 Toyota Sienna.